Shalom, everybody. Rabbi Edelstein here with this week's installment of Rabbi Ian 3, brought to you as always by Moor DC. This Rabbi Ian 3 should not be taking place at all. I should be on the treadmill right now. That was my plan. I was running late, and <laughs> I hate to admit it, but when it came when it came down to in my mind, should I do Rabbi Ian 3 or go on the treadmill? I was going to pick the treadmill. Now the truth is. It's a big mitzvah to stay healthy. Got to do it, especially at my age. So, but what changed my mind? Well, a couple of things. My beautiful daughter, Sarah, as I walked in, she and her husband are here for us with us for Shabbos. Uh, I said, you know, I, I'm going to go on the treadmill now. I don't have time to do the video. And she said, but you'll leave all the, your viewers disappointed. And that struck me all the way through. But um, truthfully, honestly, but, but that alone would not have kept me from the treadmill or from, you know, just blowing it off altogether. But also, it has to do with this week's Torah portion, a little bit, because this week's Torah portion, Chukas, towards the very end of the book of Bambinbar, has one of the most mysterious, enigmatic, deep, deep-watered incidents in the Torah, water has to do with it. It's the commandment that God gives Moshe, along with Aaron, to speak to the rock, a certain rock that had already given water to the Jewish people, it had stopped after Miriam died. They were commanded to speak, Moshe was commanded to speak to the rock, and instead he hits the rock. You might have heard the famous partial where Moshe hit the rock. And because of that, God said, you, you caused my name not to be, you did not sanctify my name or did not cause my name to be sanctified among the children of Israel. Therefore, you will not enter the land of Israel. Joshua, your disciple, will bring them in, but you won't go in. What exactly did Moshe do wrong? There are actually 10, at least, opinions in the classic commentaries that they, they brought down. What exactly was Moshe's sin? We're not going to talk about it now. Study it, ponder it, think about it. Whatever it was, it was rather small and subtle. Okay, let's get back over here. Something small. For a great, great person like Moshe at an important moment like that was in the life of the Jewish people as they're about to enter the desert with Hashem's plan for what he wanted that incident to achieve in the minds and hearts of the Jewish people, it was a small action or mistake that Moshe made, whatever it was, but it had big ramifications. On the good side, and the rabbis say whenever there's a principle in how Hashem runs the world, the good is always multiplied beyond the bad. Every good deed we do, even a little deed, has ripple effects, has repercussions. We don't even know the effect of it. Certainly, I always love to say with people, kindness. No such thing as a small act of kindness. Every kindness is huge. In and of itself, it's huge. It's a spiritual value we need desperately in this world, but also it has a ripple effect. Ben Azai, a great Talmudic sage, says, mitzvah goreris mitzvah. One mitzvah pulls along another, and that's why he says to us, run to do even the smallest mitzvah, because one mitzvah pulls along another, and, and a mitzvah, the reward of a mitzvah is another mitzvah. And there's more to talk about with that statement of Ben Azai, but run to do even a small mitzvah. I didn't run on the treadmill today, and I'm not trying to get your sympathy. I'll, I'll go extra, God willing, Saturday night. But I do want to stress the point of running to do every mitzvah, even a small mitzvah, even a small good deed. It's not small, and it will lead to bigger and bigger and bigger things forever and ever. Have a wonderful Shabbos. I thank my daughter, Sarah, for guilt, not guilting, inspiring me. And the Torah portion, inspiring me to be with you this afternoon. Have a wonderful Shabbos.